Alright. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Sorry for um a late upload, but in today's video I'm gonna show you some open source games which um should be cool. I compiled a list of all of them that came to my head. Of course there's probably way more. Feel free to tell me some down in the comments so I can make a part two if I get enough. Um I'm a bit sick, I think, so yeah, I mean, I feel sick, but I don't officially know if I have a fever or not. Um, hence the deeper than normal voice. Anyways, let's get started. Alright, first up, we actually have Super Tux. And, yeah, I... You, you can install Super Tux via the native package manager or via Flatpak. Uh, but I installed it via Steam, because Steam Cloud is really nice, so I can play Super Tux on my little laptop, my desktop, and my Steam Deck, and they all sync up. Um, so, that's why I have it on Steam. But if I just go ahead and click play. I also way muted system sounds and turned off my speakers, so hopefully you guys can hear this okay. Um... I, I did way mute it down, so it should be fine. Did I? System sounds even on. Yeah. So, by default, the controls are set to arrow keys, but you might want WASD. And as you can see, it's kind of um, a Super Mario clone. And there's actually a ton of these Tux games, which you'll see soon. But yeah, it's actually pretty hard. So this is one of the later levels. Um, the starter levels are in a snowy, a uh, snowy environment. Um, so yeah. But let's see if I can at least get some, um, ways. So this is a ghost flower. There's also fire flowers, which one collect. Y you know what? I'm not gonna spoil the game for you. Just play it for yourself. It's really fun. It's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and BSD. Actually, I'm just gonna say all platforms. So, yeah. Let's see. Okay, that's enough. Um, yeah. So you have this little map here where you can select levels. And there's the ghost levels, the forest levels, which forest levels look like this. Well, this is a special forest level, but... Um, oh, that's another special forest level. Yeah, some of them have unique environments. Uh, yeah, so here's, um, a forest level, and ignore the broken, uh, sky plane, that's something wrong with my computer, uh, yeah, I accidentally broke my GPU drivers because I was messing around, so, I don't know if I can fix that with, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I broke them trying to upgrade them, uh, but I did it kind of in a sketchy way. So I may have to reinstall Linux, I'm not sure, but whatever. So this is the snowy um, environment, and it's pretty self-explanatory, uh, I guess. like. Uh, this has some special blocks that you don't see till later in the snowy levels. Let's see, what about this one? Yeah, so, like, this one, oops, I have ghost flowers. Uh, anywho, yeah, this is a snow level. And there's also a boss fight. There's a boss fight here, so, um, actually, I'm not gonna show you. I want you to find out. 
let me just go back to where I was before. And yeah, uh, that was Super Tux. Again, Steam Cloud is why I have it on Steam. Alright, next up we have Super Tux Cart, and this is actually a game I do have installed via Flatpak. Um, so, uh, when you boot in, you can click single player, multiplayer, online. Basically, these are just like standard game modes, and then you have this story mode. And you'll get an intro if you play for the very first time. Uh, which I'm not, as you can see on the left, so that's why I got no intro. But yeah, it's just like a cozy racing game. I like it a lot. I actually like these kinds of graphics, so uh, it's a nice refresher from all the uh, detailed, um, almost realistic graphics. So let me play a level. And I forgot, you get, so let me restart, you get an additional sp additional speed boost if you start going on the set. And I also rebound my keys, because some of the default keys were not really that good, so I remapped my keys in this game. Um, so I'm not going to say specific keys I'm pressing, because I don't want you guys to get confused. <laughs> Actually, I will, but just note, it's not the default. Um, so, I'm pressing space to fire, so whatever's in inventory at the top is what will get fired. And wow, my skills are not up to par. Okay, let me, um, let me do this. So yeah, once you collect something, you can press... You can press the fire button to fire. So, uh, this one that's in my inventory is kind of cool. So, let me find a banana, press it, and bananas and boxes swap places as well as bum, uh, I mean gum and power ups. So, yeah. Uh,. Super Tux was made in 2003, and this game was made, I don't actually remember when this game was made, but it's a fork of an older game called OG Tux Racer. Yeah, I know, <laughs> a fork, which is kind of funny, but you know what, whatever, it's a good game, so. Who cares if it's a fork? The developers really did a lot to make it a great game. Like adding more characters and whatnot. See, I'm gonna win this race. Uh, on my other laptop, uh, yeah, I don't sync the data manually probably should, but on my other laptop, uh, I beat the entire game. So let me finish this real quick. DistroTube is going to be pretty happy uh, from this list. That's your hint for the um, one of the games. It's going to make him pretty happy. Hey, DistroTube, if you see this video, um, <laughs> love you, man. Your, your content's great. Um, hope you enjoyed. Uh, Join my revolt server? Uh, Distro to Revolt is like um open source Discord clone. 
I'd be honored if you joined. It'd be really cool having the one of the kings of open source join my revolt server. Yeah, I called you a king of open source. You're welcome. It is kind of funny how DistroTube is kind of one of the only Linux YouTubers who actually fully uses open source stuff whenever he can. Except for the times when he has to use stuff like Zoom. But it's kind of funny because like Brody and even like like me for example, I still use Discord sometimes because there's some people who just don't want to talk to me on Revolt. Um. But my goal is to be able to be proprietary software free, unless it's stuff like drivers. So, yeah, that was Super Tux. And if you want to play with friends, there is a way to play with friends. No port forwarding involved. I really love this game. I think you guys should check it out. Uh, just do flat pack install Super Tux cart. And it is spelled, so... Uh, I'm gonna switch to the new shell, cause why not? You can do flat pack install super tux cart. And it will install it. It'll be something like net.supertux.supertux cart. Um, super tux cart, super tux cart. And of course, if you have my flat run script installed, you can just do flat run. Uh, super tux cart from D menu or something and it will run it. Uh, I will make a video about my scripts in a different uh, uh, Later on I still have more scripts to make till it's a full collection And I also want to package them all as Pac-Man packages before I make a video on them So you guys can just add my repo and install them All right next up is bugdom uh, Bugdom is a game, it's really old. It's uh, made by Pangea Soft. And it was, and it was modernized by this guy on GitHub called Jurio. And I installed it as, a, as an app image because that's kind of the official way on Linux. I downloaded it from Jurio's GitHub and uh, and yeah, uh, I will try and leave all the links that I can remember to leave in the description. So you should be able to just check the description and see Jorio's link to his GitHub. But any anywho, <laughs> this is the game. So I actually lost all my data. So I'm gonna restart. So, basically, you're just this little dude who walks around and collects stuff, and you can use the mouse to move around, so this is me literally... So, yeah, it's so old that it's using old control schemes, so, like, left-click is breaking stuff, um, and right-click is jumping, and then just moving the mouse is walking, which is really weird. Um, but yeah, it's a really fun game still. You will have these annoying UI elements, like a bar at the bottom with footsteps. That means nothing. Uh, so I recommend going into the settings and changing that in video settings. Jorio did patch the game, so it's not the original. He did add some quality of life features, like more settings options, um, which I really appreciate, because some things in this game really needed setting options. He also did some bug fixing, which is, for a game like this, doesn't really matter. Um, in fact, it helps, because no one's going to be exploiting bugs in a game like this. They'd just be annoyed by them. Oh! <laughs> um, for those of you who start playing this game, 
here's something I didn't realize till way later on. See this little bug floating by me that I got from breaking something? Well, it's actually like a... Uh, I'll show you. So... Uh, let's see. I don't really want to waste it, but see this bug chasing me? If I press tab, this bug will explode. <coughs> Sorry for coughing. Like I said, bit sick. Um, but yeah. Uh, so, let's see. Where's the rest of the nuts? Ah, there's a nut. <clears throat> but yeah, this game is available for all platforms. Um, it was actually original, uh, originally. So, all these Pangea Soft games were really made for Mac OS. Which I thought was kind of interesting, because, like, why Mac OS? Made no sense to me. And apparently my dad actually played Pangea Soft games when he was a kid. Uh, cause some of them were on Nintendo. So, interesting history. Very interesting history. But yeah. So, one gripe I have is you can't save the game immediately where you are. You have to walk into special areas to save the game. Which, it's not that big of a deal, because the areas aren't that far apart. But, okay, let me exit this, uh, enter this gate. Got another bomb, buddy. This level, I think, has ants in it. Yeah. Um... Oh yeah, if you press spacebar, you can... Yeah, it has ants. If you press spacebar, though, you can do double speed. You can actually kill the ants if you ram into them enough. I'm just gonna escape. Hi, ants. Who's bossing you? Oh no. Gotta go. So, no. So, yeah, it's. I, I like simple gameplay games where you just kind of do uh, one or two tasks. Like this game. Of course, they also have to have entertaining graphics. It can't just be, um, you know, so. But yeah, I'm gonna free these buggies. And you get extra points if you're able to free bugs and stuff like that. So ladybugs give you points and um, clovers give you points. Give you points, so definitely look out for those and look out for these annoying bug things which I really wish were not in the game because they make finding nutshells kind of deceiving sometimes oh time to rotate the camera yeah this game is so old it has weird camera rotation stuff so you have to manually rotate the camera, which in some scenarios is actually good because some games with auto-rotate get a little annoying in some situations. So this is the area I was talking about, those logs. To save your current data, you have to walk into these logs. Okay, so I got 
not that many ladybugs. But let's see how many of these clovers I got. Four leaf clover. Okay. Nice. Okay, so my final score is 21,100. Or 21100. See, so yeah, I'm gonna save to file A. And I think you get the idea of the game. And don't worry, the levels become more unique as the game goes on. <laughs> so I'm gonna save my progress. And if you click on an item and the spider takes too long, you can double click on the item and it will happen immediately. All right, next up we have a Steam game that I have literally no idea how to play. Uh, so I'm not going to review it. I'm just telling you guys it's an open source game that maybe some of you will like. It's called T-Worlds. T-E-E-W-O-R-L-D-S. And so uh, maybe check it out. If that's kind of your thing. It's like a jumping shooting game. Alright, next we have Extreme Tux Racer. This is... Um, it's from 2001. <laughs> so very, very old. And let me enter. So, it's... Fun, sort of, but it's it's by no means a game that I'd play over other games. And ah, this awesome window manager has these weird times where just these minimize um, pop-ups occur. I don't know why that is. Someone please tell me if I can fix that. I wonder if I can. Oh, wrong game. Ah, these minimize pop-ups. Okay, there we go. I'm probably just gonna remove window hints, but um, you can you can wave your cursor around and it makes the snow in the background react, which is one of my favorite things in this game. But okay, let's um, let's race. So you use your arrow keys, and you can speed up with your arrow keys and slow down. When you slow down, you get sharper steering. And the goal is just to collect all the fish and not be too slow. Because if you don't collect enough fish or you are too slow at the game, um, you're, you're gonna lose. So, uh, yeah, I won the game that time. <laughs> Alright. Next level. So, yeah, it's a fun game, don't get me wrong. It's just a very simple game that can get boring kind of quickly. It also feels kind of lonely. Like, there's only one being out here, and that's Tux. Like, they didn't put a village on the mountain or anything like that. It's just Tux. Which, I don't know about you, but that kind of feels a little depressing. Yeah. Alright. Next level. So, yeah, these levels, they get harder as you go on. Um, and though it is a very, very simplistic game, I'd still definitely check it out. It's definitely worth your attention. And you can install it via Flatpak. Um, it's just called Extreme Tux Racer, all one word. So definitely give it a shot. It's an amazing game. Well, 
Uh, yeah. yeah. So, definitely check it out. So, this is the next levels, which I am not able to beat yet. But basically, the gist is come down here slowly and then get this fish and fish. It's very hard. Like, it looks easy, but it's actually very hard. Because the steering gets so sharp when you slow down. So you have to get the speed just right. Which it takes some skill. So I'm gonna get all these fish. How did I do? Yay, passed. Uh, this next level is really hard, though. Though It has, like, all kinds of tricks to make it really hard. Like, oh man, I just missed an entire part of the level that would give me more fish. I will warn you, there is no escape menu in this game. As soon as you click escape, it just aborts the race and makes you lose. So yeah, that's one reason why I don't really play it a lot. So yeah, that's uh, super. That that's Extreme Tux Racer. So, time for the next game. All right, the next game is Mind Test, <clears throat> and Mind Test on its own is actually a very bare bones game. So if I just Enter mind test. It's kind of a Minecraft clone, but the base game really you can't call it that. Oh, right. Uh, when when you install mods, you get weird terrain generation. So let me uninstall these weird mods that I don't actually like. So uninstall. Uh. Uninstall. Okay, so now let me create a new world. I'm not actually sure. Okay, yeah. Okay, mine test. So yeah, this is mine test. On its own, it's a really boring game that you're not really gonna want to play on its own but that's kinda the point it's not supposed to be a game you play on its own you're supposed to add mods to make it more fun which is a really interesting concept in my opinion but yeah the textures look awful by default um, yeah so So yeah, uh, I'm not gonna play the base game. I'm gonna show you a really popular mod, popular mod called Mine Clone Two. <laughs> this aims to be uh, a Minecraft clone, and I play this sometimes. So if I enter. I don't have a world named Maine. Let's see if I can force delete it. Find dash I name. Oh, it's just in a folder called dot mine test. Okay. So I installed this via my native package manager, which is Pac-Man. So CD into worlds. Rm dash rf. Rm dash r. 
because I need none of these worlds. Okay. It said I already had the main world because I uninstalled a mod that had a world called main. So let me make a new world. Main MC2. So main mine clone 2. Uh, this will be V7, world generation, create, and I'm actually going to add a shader mod. Um, so there's some mods that you can add to make the game look nicer. So when I spawn in, Mine Clone 2 actually does have its own music, which I do quite enjoy. But okay, let me get to the top of this hill. Thought I saw a chunk error there for a sec. So yeah, my PC is a little slow right now because of OBS. But okay, there's a structure there. Can I make this jump? No, I couldn't. Anywho. <clears throat> uh, let me go over. And the fact that the water is the same height as the blocks, I think that's a bug in the shading mod I added. Yeah, let me actually remove this shading mod, because I know a better one. So you can actually... <clears throat> uh, browse online content. So, uh, shader, shaders, shadows. <laughs> so, this is one that I've tried before. So let me, that screenshot looks really bad, but then again, it's a compressed screenshot. So let me select mod, enable shaders, save, play game. <laughs> and as you can see, it changed the lighting a little. So I'm going to Collect pumpkin. And I guess the water is not a bug. Oh, baby zombie. Baby zom zombies are about as deadly as in Minecraft in this game. There we go. Sugar cane. And unlike most Minecraft clones, this is actually a good open source one. So yeah, I could actually play this for a very long time, start a dedicated world in it. It's that fun. It's that good of a Minecraft clone. And you do actually have skin customization, like deep skin customization options. So, let me create a skin. <clears throat> uh, let's see. This, sure, why not? That, this, why not? I have shorter hair right now, so. That hair color, okay. <clears throat> I have blue eyes, the mouth is fine, the top, uh, this, <laughs> um, brown pants, why not, footwear, 
Actually, I will do... I'll do like a... Yeah, that's good. So, yeah, now I have... This is my skin. And you do actually have um, animated models, which is kind of cool. <laughs> so this game does flex on Minecraft a little. And actually, fun fact, if you see a bunch of Minecraft clones on like the App Store and stuff, on your Android or iOS phones, a lot of them are actually based off Mind Test. Because mine test is so easy to work with. I mean, it has a little modding API. Well, the game crashed. I don't know why. But yeah, that's mine test. Alright, next up we have Velerin. And I did actually open my browser for this one. So Velerin is an open source voxel game written in Rust. And you can create an account here. I created an account already. I don't actually remember the password, but I think it'll be fine. Uh, so, so, um, if you want to install Velerin via Flatpak, you copy this command, and you paste it into a terminal, so, I'm just going to paste it into Rofi, I'm going to say alacrity, dash E, and then that and I will install it. And now it is installed. So you will have an app on your computer now called Airshipper. And what you want to do, well, I think they changed the launcher. So update. <clears throat> So, it is going to download the game files. And install them. And, okay. Velerin is installed. I'm going to close this. Close my browser. Um, launch. So, I'm going to see if I can log in. I don't actually remember my password. Let's see. Oh, yeah. No. I do know it was similar to this one I entered. So I'm just sifting through my password here. Okay, so I got my password right. <clears throat> so, let me enter. So I've got... Like, I don't know what the heck is going on. Let's see. Whatever. Okay, I'm gonna go into single player.
All right, so I'm gonna create a new character and it will be a male. I'll select a dwarf, why not? Uh, what will my main weapon be? Short sword, axe. I'll do an axe, why not? Hairstyle, bald. <laughs> Um, that will be the hair color, skin color, eye detail, eye color. So it's pretty detailed, you can do a lot. Accessories. Gold earrings, why not? And beard. If I can grab the slider. Let's do that. Oh yeah. I'm gonna give this uh, character a name. Sir Boob Boobdis. Sir Boobdis. Alright. I'm gonna play as Sir Boobdis. And here we go. This is the game. And I can enter first person like this. And I'm not actually too sure how to play this game properly, but this is me playing it, sort of. You have different ways of attacking with left click and right click. I'm going to collect this twig. <clears throat> I do know that you can modify the world. But yeah, this game is definitely worth checking out. Uh, I tried making my game in C++. It didn't really go well because... Uh, Panda 3D and C++ has terrible documentation for some reason, but okay. I think I need all these logs. <laughs> Not quite sure. Anywho, I'm gonna join this, um, I'm gonna enter this, uh, castle. Collect stones. Yeah, I'm not sure. If I press G, I can activate my lantern and then turn it off again if I want to. Here's a dark spot. Yeah, so that's the lantern. There is a way to activate the glider, which I'm not sure. Ah, uh, yeah, it's control. So yeah, with a glider, you can glide. Like that. I'm gonna climb this hill. And this game has LOD, level of detail, so it makes it real, real nice. Cause then it looks like there's stuff in the distance. And the game crashed because I have sketchy GPU drivers installed. Oh wait, it did not crash. Yeah, sometimes games do that. They freeze and then they unfreeze. I don't know why. Sketchy GPU drivers, maybe. But yeah, let me glide down here. Oh! And there are enemies in this game, which I don't really want to fight right now. Actually, come here, you bastard. And I died. I'm gonna respawn. Did I lose all my stuff? B. No, I did not lose all my stuff. Okay. So yeah, that's Velerin. I definitely want to play more of this game and learn more about it. Maybe livestream me playing it. 
But yeah, so that's Valorant. It's open source. Definitely check it out. Uh, I will leave links in the description. All right, next up we have Zero AD. This is why I said DistroTube would be happy if he was watching this, is because he loves Zero AD. It's one of his favorite games. Um, so yeah. Uh, let me just jump into a game. DistroTube's got a great video explaining how to play. I'm actually not too sure how to play, but let me adjust the bot a little. Um, I'm gonna be the Mayas. The Marias. I'm not sure how you would say it. But I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna click uh, start game. And this game is really fun. So I'm gonna send all the uh, women. So double clicking them, I'm gonna send all of them to pick berries. Which yeah, cause the men are better at fighting. Uh, cause they have all the gear. Whereas the women are better at picking bushes. Men are terrible at picking bushes, and women are terrible at fighting in this game, so. I'm gonna yeah, yeah, make the men chop trees right now. And let's see, can I train any more people? Uh, yeah, so. I'm gonna shift click. I'm gonna summon some longbowmen. I'm gonna summon some people. Yes, yes, These oh. people are also gonna chop trees. And to make it easier, like, more efficient. You can put elephants in storage houses here to make it so they don't have to travel as far. So I'm actually gonna put the storage elephant here. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. you bowman, I want you to chop trees. Pfft. I just noticed, because the swastika is um, a historical thing. I just noticed there's a swastika right there. I forgot how to rotate in this game. Uh, yeah, how do I rotate? Ah, there we go. Shift and mouse wheel. I can move with just mouse wheel. So yeah, there's a swastika right there. Uh, Alright. I'm gonna place down a place closer to these people where they can put wood. So, uh, I'm gonna... You are going to, you will, well, actually, they don't really need, because they they're fine. Let's see. These over here will need, so. Storage house, where's the storage house? Storehouse. Uh, I'm going to place the storehouse right here. And I'm going to get some women over here to help out. So you're going to help. And one of you are also going to help. And I actually 
do need another berry picker, so go over there. And I'm gonna save my current progress. So, yeah, I'm not gonna spoil the game too much, but that's zero AD in a nutshell. Alright, uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry for late uploading. Um, I am getting a System76 laptop that should be coming any time soon. So, the channel should greatly benefit from that since I can make videos more and more. Uh, so, uh, see you guys later. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, subscribe. I have 130 subscribers. Uh, see if you can get DistroTube to watch this video. I'll be honored if he watches it. Um, I want his feedback. He's part of my inspiration. So, yeah. Like, subscribe, uh, follow me on Odyssey, ring the bell on both platforms and like on both platforms, leave a comment on both platforms, and again, <laughs> subscribe, uh, share this video, and all that. So, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.